Professor Francesca Gablero from the Spanish National Research Institute of Steel. She is one of the pioneers who had been working together with Harry on the development of super bainite. Please, Francesca, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jan. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today with all of you, with all the colleagues from the PT group and, uh, and uh, this metallurgist uh, community around uh, Professor Baricia. I was in, in Cambridge as postdoc between 1997 and 2000. And, uh, and it was a great, great experience. Uh, uh, let me to explain you why I choose uh, this uh, title. Uh, a binary reaction, because I was working with Harry on binite and I learned about uh, binite transformation uh, when I was in Cambridge. And, uh, and it got at the center of my career, this structure, and, uh, and it has been my passion for so long. And I, I select this uh, title, A Metallurgy Journey into the Wall of Atoms, because to understand this transformation and this structure, we need to, to, to get deeper and uh, to, to walk a path down to the atomic scale to understand uh, the, the whole transformation and, and the structure in detail. And that's the work that I want to, to, to do today with you and uh, to explain you uh, what we have been doing. And uh, as, as you know, that uh, uh, this journey on super by night, as already mentioned, start uh, the late uh, 1990s and everything started at the tea time. Uh, at that time, uh, we were uh, uh, a large group from all around the world. You can see in the picture people from Japan, Mexico, France, uh, Spain, and uh, UK. And uh, everything started um, this journey and this passion on super by night. When I told to Harry at the tea time that I was coming from the furnace room, and uh, and and I just heard the, a piece of metal singing as as this. I hope you can hear. That was a piece of uh, high carbon, high silicon steel. After austenization, uh, I air cool, and during cooling, that was the noise that I heard. And uh, that's the beginning of a journey. And at the end, uh, that was the beginning of the super by night uh, development that as you know, is the world's first bulk nanostructure uh, material. Originally applied as an armor steel, uh, but uh, nowadays we found different civil applications for this material. At the end, is a ultra high string, strength material with the ability to harden under deformation. But if it was, but uh, if it was, uh, um, amazing to work in this material is because the complexity of the structure. We were dealing with a metastable carbon supersaturated ferritic structure. The matrix controlled the strength for sure. And also a metastable uh, second phase, the return and austenite, uh, driving the wall hardening behavior as in trip and trip assisted steels. And with these two issues, we could get these amazing uh, properties, but uh, to understand this extremely high hardness and this combination of induced properties, we need to get uh, deeper into the structure and to 
to, to go to that journey into the wall of atoms. You can see here a TN image of a super by night. Uh, apparently look like a two-phase structure. It's much more, but you can see in the atom proof tomography the distribution of, uh, of atoms at the, at the nanoscale. This is a carbon atom map. And you can see the heterogeneous distribution of carbon responsible of much of the properties of this material. Okay, you, you can see here uh, another TN image of uh, this microstructure. Uh, this is a high strength, high silicon steel, transformed isothermally at low temperature, very low to be by night. And at the very beginning of this investigation, we got so many questions in conference and meetings about uh, some doubts if this is by night or this is martensite. We at the very early state of investigation, we determined the MS temperature of this material uh, to be 120 degrees C in this steel, for instance. And you can see the isothermal, isothermal transformation was performed over the MS, this MS, and for long time enough to get transformation. But I must say that that doubt and that question was pertinent. And let me to show you another micro. This is a martensitic microstructure also nanoscale, obtaining in a high carbon, high silicon steel as well. In this case, by quenching into cool water and then uh, temper at 450 degrees C. You can see apparently two phases, uh, martensitic ferrite, written in austenite. On the left, you see the bright field image. On the right, you can see perfectly in the dark field image, the written in austenite. The second phase. It looked really very similar. Let's carry on. Is something related to high carbon, uh, low transformation temperatures? This is another two examples. On the left, the image of a martensitic structure, in this case, ultra fine martensitic structure obtained in a medium carbon, high silicon steel, after quenching and partitioning. And a uh, well-known, nowadays well-known heat treatment, but uh, great interest nowadays in literature on this advanced heat treatment. On the right, very similar microstructure, ultra-fine, magnetic structure obtaining a medium carbon high silicon steel. In this case, after accelerating cooling and an air cooling from 500 degrees C, this is for automotive application, very similar. Let's open the focus. Sometimes in TN, we look at a very small region of our sample. Let's open the focus and, and see the complexity of the structure. Again, another comparison. On the left, SEN image of a ultra-fine martensitic structure obtaining a medium carbon high silicon steel by quenching and partitioning. On the right, a nanoscale by nitic microstructure obtaining a high carbon, high silicon steel by isothermal transformation at low temperature. You can see in both cases, a very complex distribution uh, of the second phase or retaining austenite, different size, uh, different morphologies, uh, quite complex, but the beauty of these structures to, to control properties such as ductility and toughness. Okay. Uh, that's not surprising. I don't want to get into the mechanics here, but it's not surprising if, if we know about the displaced nature of, of by night uh, to, be, to have some similarities with Martin's side. But at this point, and recently, we did this systematic exercise because in all that, those samples, we have different chemical composition, different transformation temperature, different heat treatment schedules. What I want is to, to do a 
really co um, systematic comparison of martensitic structure, vinitic structure in the same steel for the same chemical composition and using the same, let's call it holding temperature. Some temperature can be transformation, some temperature can be uh, tempering, uh, partitioning, but that at the end is uh, the, the temperature out at which the microstructure evolve. This is a high carbon, high silicon steel, and we perform uh, three different heat treatment schedules. After the same austenization, we perform what in the industry is called like house tempering, which is a isothermal transformation at low temperature, at three different temperatures. And we perform a quenching partitioning and a quenching temper at the same holding temperature of partitioning and untempered. Okay, let's compare the microstructure and, and see how the similarities and the difference between martensite and by night. But I must say, temper martensite and by night. Okay, this is uh, the SEM micrograss. And we can tell already things. We can say that bionitic structure are not really similar to martensitic structure in this steel at the higher transformation temperature. No, they are really nice. And I have to say that there are so many advantages of this structure. We will talk about trip and tweep and wall hardening. This is really nice to have a structure with this level of return of stenite. But that's another, another story. What we can tell is that transforming two by night at low temperature, we can tell that apparently they look really similar. You see these coarse particles, calls, they are primary cementite. This is a hyper eutectoid steel, and we have certain amount of primary cementite, but the austenization temperature is the same uh, for the three uh, different heat treatments, then the volume fraction is the same. But the, the ferrit, I'm interested about the ferritin matrix and the level of return of stenite. Okay, then low temperature by night may be similar, a lot of similarities with martensite. Let's see what similarities. This is a very simple comparison. In this axis, we have the hardness. We have the strength. Let's talk about how we perform the simi similarities for performance. And in this axis, we have the austenite volume fraction. We are talking about the microstructure, but at the same time, we, we anticipate information in terms of uh, performance for ductility and toughness, sometimes we're resistant and fatigue. Okay, look, we can tell a lot of things already. To start with, with the martensitic structure. It's amazing. Quench and temper, exactly the same that quench and partitioning with a difference of degrees, a few degrees in the heat treatment. That, what does mean is in high carbon, high silicon steels, why should we complicate and stop the quenching at a given temperature? Let's quench and then let's do a tempering. And maybe that tempering, it should be a few degrees C uh, or below the a quench and partitioning, but there is no need. At the end, it's the same structure in terms of hardness and maybe performance on ductility and toughness. But let's come back to the by night and martensite. Look here, these four samples, very interesting. The same volume fraction of retain and austenite. We can retain the same volume fraction of retain and austenite, just with a different in hardness of a, around 50, 70 beakers. Interesting. Look to these three, the same hardness, but in Martin City, we retain 10% more than in bionitic structure. Then if we get the same hardness, our matrix is not exactly the same. If we work out the balance, uh, for the hardness of the individual phases. At, at some point, the, the matrix is, is not as hard in uh, binary ferrite than in martensite. Let's, let's carry on. 
more details of the X-ray analysis, those values of retinal stenite were measured by X-ray analysis. Let's get deeper in the X-ray analysis and look to the matrix, to the tetragonality of the matrix. These four samples with the same volume fraction of retinal stenite, as I told you, the same femen, primary femenite volume fraction, the very similar tetragonality, very similar. We can look at the crystallized size, at the micro stain. We can work out from the micro stain that this location density, the same. Again, we are not talking about martensitic structure, fresh martensitic structure. We are talking about quenzan partitioning, quenzan temper, more or less temper martensitic structures. The same dislocation density. I want to get, start the path toward the path down to the atomic scale now. Why? Because still we cannot understand this difference in stress or for the same hardness. How can we get the same hardness between these two samples with different volume fraction of retinal stenite? The answer must be at the atomic scale. And that's what we have done. That journey that any metallurgist should perform to the nanoscale. Okay, we perform atom proof tomography and look to the accumulation of carbon at the nanoscale. And when we look to the, the bionitic structures, we look, um, we, we found primary femenite, maybe uh, low, uh, maybe para equilibrium femenite uh, as in lower bionite, because uh, super bionite it has been characterized as a carbide free bionitic microstructure. You can read that in literature, but in fact, is not a carbide free bionitic microstructure. It looked like that in SEN, it looked like that in, in quick TN, but it look, if you do careful TN or if you do atom proof tomography, there are a lot of uh, nano precipitates around. And, and, and you can see here, a part of the, the cementite, we found this, what we call carbon clusters, with a carbon accumulation up to 12 atomic percent. If we look to martensitic structure, temper martensitic structure at the same temperature, a part of the clustering, we found also more developed nanoparticles. In fact, they are plate-like cementite with a level of carbon up to 25 atomic percent. If we increase the tempering temperature in the martensitic structure, this is the case with the same hardness than the bionitic but um, a, a larger amount of retinal stenite. You can see also this plate-like features with a carbon content after 30 atomic percent. That must be epsilon carbide. And we did um, complementary TN to prove that. No correlation TN, correlative, complementary TN, and epsilon carbide was detected by TN as well. If we look to a big amount of data in the APT, we found different um, nano features. And you can see that in by night, we don't find epsilon carbides when we transfer a low temperature. But in martensitic structure, epsilon carbide is detected in the two tested temperature. And that epsilon carbide, is the, the reason why in this martensitic structure, hold after tempering, hold it at the same temperature of those tempering, we can get bigger, uh, larger hardness, bigger hardness. What uh, it tell me that a part of the strengthening and everything is that the martensitic structures are in that, in that evolution of the microstructure, to the equilibrium is much progress in a martensitic structure than in a bionitic structure for the same holding temperature. That's a conclusion that I took from here. But let's come back to the tetragonality that uh, it proved that it's comparable to temper martensite, but uh, we didn't mention more, and that's really interesting. And we learned a lot from tetragonality and also from the carbon supersaturation, the meta stability, the metastability of the matrix. And as I said before, you can see here, 
the comparison of the tetragonality of different bimetic structure for a low transformation temperature, you can see that the tetragonality is slightly decreased when we increase the transformation temperature and also when we increase the transformation time, slightly. But for sure, it's not comparable to a squint structures, fresh martensite, or natural age martensite. We don't know how many days it will take uh, the measurements to be performed. Um, that tetragonality, a part of X-ray analysis, it was also measured at home, uh, uh, by Badesia and co-workers uh, by synchrotron. And you can see the tetragonality at 200 degrees C as the transformation is taking place. We perform also a um, synchrotron. We studied two temperatures. And uh, again, we see that the tetragonality decrease with increasing the transformation temperature. But what we saw, look to, to the previous experiments, uh, three and a half hours, here 15 hours, what we saw is that the tragonality is quite persistent. It's, it remains practically stable, that the tragonality at the transformation temperature. This is really, really interesting. What we did, look, let's look at that tetragonal matrix and let's look how uh, look like that matrix, that the lattice of, uh, of that matrix. And you can see a diffraction pattern here of a high carbon, high silicon steel transformed at 250 degrees C. And we found those diffuse spikes elongating in very specific directions that in the past have been related to short range ordering of carbon atoms. And we also saw those satellites around those spots that have been related to a structural um, modulation, uh, which has a longer period than that of the fundamental lattice. If we do high resolution TN, we detect also these twin like modulated structures. You see the satellite as well. Um, and that has been reported in the 80s and early 90s, uh, the same evidence for the early stage of tempering of uh, iron carbon martensite. With atom proof tomography, what we saw is that tetragonality is directly related to the carbon atom clustering. Here you see a beautiful needle shaped sample, the reconstruction and the complex distribution of the carbon clustering in a single bimetic ferrite plate transformed at 220 degrees C. This is uh, the way to reduce uh, the lattice distortion strain energy caused by the interstitial atoms. And uh, that's what we learned from Martin's side and that what we detect in low temperature by night. But we saw tetragonality related to carbon clustering as in Martin's side, but, after, but we didn't say how much carbon is in carbon supersaturation in this bionic structure. Carbon clustering and tetragonality is related to carbon supersaturated uh, ferrite, but how much carbon supersaturation we have? That's the last thing that I want to, to explain to you. We need for so long, and that was not easy, to measure the carbon content in the bimetic ferrite locally and a way of carbon enriched region. At the very early stage of our 3D atom proof, we determined that carbon content um, with uh, concentration profiles and proxy grams. Like in this example, you have um, a reconstruction uh, with a lot of uh, uh, carbon accumulation, uh, uh, carbon enriched austenite, vementite, uh, carbon clustering, and always at the other side of the interface, there is ferrite. 
and then we get away of the interface and determine the carbon content. But is that the carbon content in solid solution? Okay, we, with the time um, and getting a lot of results, we found out that that's not, it's not easy to see, to measure the carbon content in this material with that level of carbon movement accumulation at the nano scale. What we want, the, the answer, the question is not how much carbon there is to the other side of the boundary in a austenite or to the other side of the boundary in cementite. The question should be how much carbon there is in this sample randomly distributed. And to do that, we need to do certain um, a data mining uh, exercise. What we did is to read off of any carbon enriched regions and to, to, to do that, we determine a threshold of carbon content below that should be the binary ferrite matrix. And over that, it should be any carbon enriched region. But the threshold is, should be determined ensuring that granular distribution of the carbon in the matrix. That's what we did. You can see here an example. And let me show you the evolution of the carbon satur supersaturation related to tetragonality and carbon clustering. In binitic structures, transformed at different temperatures in relation to martensite. In this case, as quenched martensite. You can see here different, in red is the martensitic as quenched martensite. In black is different mm, binitic structures. Medium carbon high silicon steel transforming to intermediate temperatures. High carbon high silicon steel transforming to low temperature. In one case, we have an evolution of time here. In the first column, this is a tetragonality measured by X-ray analysis. And again, we cannot say the level of tetragonality we are dealing with in low temperature by night is comparable to a squench martensite. In the second column, this is the carbon content according to X-ray analysis. This is the carbon content that you can tell carbon supersaturation, not really. This is uh, the overall of two different uh, carbon enrichment. The carbon clustering related to the tetragonality and the actual carbon supersaturation, or let's say the carbon randomly distributed in the matrix. There is something really of interest. Below uh, over 300 degrees C, at intermediate temperature, there is not carbon clustering, and there is not carbon uh, supersaturation, you can tell in the binic structure. When we have this significant amount of carbon in the ferrite, we detect the carbon clustering and we detect the significant tetragonality, but never, never of the level of a squench. What it is really interesting is that the carbon content of those clusters compare quite well with ironate carbon compound that was also uh, reported in literature as a precursor or an embryon of the um, uh, nucleation of metastable uh, carbides as epsilon carbide during the evolution of the structure of martensite, of martensite at uh, the very early state of the temple. Let's to get into the picture the cementite precipitation that uh, is natural as well in binary reaction. All the time we have been talking about medium carbon, high carbon high silicon to phase by any different return and austenite. Let's get into the picture that the cementite the precipitation. We select these three steels, medium carbon, low silicon steel, medium carbon, high silicon steel, and high carbon, high silicon steel. And we cover a wide range of transformation temperatures, okay? 
different morphologies. By night, it's not just a single structure. There are plenty of structures that can be called by night. Different, upper by night, car by three by night, lower by night, uh, with cementite, interlap, intralap, nanostructure by night. Apparently, car by three, not really. Car by three is as lower by night. Let's see the carbon content in binitiferite. Originally measured by concentration uh, profiles and proxy grams and uh, randomly distributed. And you can, uh, you can say that a temperature higher of 300 degrees C, you can say that uh, there are so many processes running at the same time to be able to detect the carbon supersaturation during the transformation. And uh, what we got as we learned with low temperature by night is that we were coming from uh, this plastic uh, forest structure and that was approaching the equilibrium very similarly of uh, low of Martin site at low temperature temperament. That's what we learn. This is as evolution at 200 degrees C, evolving with time. Those values are for the very beginning of this journey, journey to the atomic world, and that's with uh, concentration profiles and proxy grams. But uh, you can see the carbon supersaturation anyway, and the persistence. That persistent with time that we check with tetragonality uh, by synchrotron. And this is the tempering of one of those structures of my net. And you can see that, uh, that we need to, a lot of extra heat to, to start to see the evolution of the structure and to reduce the carbon supersaturation. But at the end, eventually will go that path of approaching equilibrium. And you can see how similar it is to martensite. This is low temperature by night after tempering at 300 degrees C. You can see the carbon clustering is still there, but we see these well-formed features with higher carbon content that compare quite well with the iron-4 carbon. And look, at the top, Martin site, temperature at 50 degrees C, carbon clusters. At the bottom, Martin site, temperature at 150 degrees C. You can see the same level of carbon in those features. Eventually, with energy, extra energy, epsilon carbides will be formed in by night, and it was for in Martin City structure, quen some partitioning and quen some temperature structure at lower temperatures, at lower temperatures. Okay, I want to, to finish here. And what I want to finish is with Harry's work that he include in, uh, in his last edition of By Night in Steels, which I love this synthesis. The appeal of By Night is, is in the elegance of the coordinated dance that that atoms perform, and I want to thank to those people that uh, make that work and that journey uh, with Harry and me, like Carlos Garcia Mateo, that I believe is in the room, and the young scientists that uh, learn about by night here in Madrid, uh, and that's because Carlos and I learn in Cambridge. You can say they are the grandchildren children of, uh, of Harry, and, uh, and they, they enjoy as much as we have enjoyed with Atoms and by night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francesca, for the very interesting and inspirational talk. Um, it's time for questions. Um, I see one in the chat from Sarah Spabu. Uh, he's asking, will the samples contain mixed microstructure? Are there any benetic ferrite that may not have tetragonal distortion in localized regions that can be delineated by 
bulk X-ray diffraction analysis. Okay, uh, I don't see why it cannot be possible with misted microstructure. Uh, just depend of the transformation temperature that by night has been formed and uh, the heat treatment schedule of, uh, for instance, uh, first Martin sites for and later by night in some quench and partitioning structure, for instance. If the partitioning is at low temperature and during that partitioning you don't avoid by night reaction, why not? But uh, it's, it's, it's a question of temperature, I will say that delay all the um, all the other process that take place during the binary reaction a part of the displastic transformation. Okay, I hope it answers the uh, Sirasha questions. We also have another one uh, raised his hand uh, from Indrajit uh, Day. Please, I think we will um, unmute. Hello, ma'am. Yes, myself. you can answer your questions directly. Yeah, ma'am, myself, Indrajit, I'm from India. So in case of high carbon, high silicon steel, you have done quenching partitioning. And uh, in, uh, in that case, how much retain roshanite you have detected? And uh, at which temperature and the time? Uh, okay, uh, as you can see, with the, uh, it was, if I recall, between 10 and 30% of retinal austenite, depending on the holding temperature. But uh, yeah, it can be the same of magnetic structure. Yeah, yes, you need to adapt the quenching temperature and, uh, and the partitioning should be in low temperature. Yeah, yeah, that's the level of, the same level of retinal austenite. You can, you can look into the details uh, on materials characterization 2020 uh, for that work. Yeah. Hi, Professor. Hi. Um, Professor Yang is also asking questions. Sorry, we need to mute, unmute you first. And we see, I see in the chat that so Martinez is asking, is it possible to make the files available after the presentation? This is for sure, don't worry about it. For Tuesday's presentation, you can already see it on Harry's YouTube channel. So this one will also be available after the session. Um, can we unmute Professor J. Ayan? Harry, you are also talking, I, I can't hear. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Frank, I have one question for you. Uh, because we, we deal with Martin side and band line, of course, we consider the dislocation density. And during tampering, uh, the cluster occur, of course. But I would like to know that how about the relationship between the dislocation density and cluster? Yeah, you spoke quite well. The only subject that I didn't bring today, which is the dislocation density and the carbon content segregated on that dislocation density. There is a, as you, as you saw, um, on the X-ray analysis values uh, calculated from the micro strain, that this location density on the magnetic structures can be comparable to the martensitic structure after tempering at the same holding, okay? The origin, um, what, uh, um, that's those dislocation, it has been uh, observed to be uh, carbon uh, with a high amount of segregation of carbon. We have, we cannot tell if um, how, how much carbon it will be segregated. 
because uh, we detect that if we have dislocation, a network of dislocation close to the interface, the level of segregation will of carbon will be higher. I believe, I believe, but maybe it yes, can be a, specu a speculative answer because those dislocations are on the path of the carbon that during the carburization of the fully supersaturated by nitiferite, escaping the carbon to the retaining alkaline. But we have shown a wide range of carbon contents on single dislocation, uh, dislocation network uh, close to the interface. We didn't find a pattern of how much segregation on that dislocation we can detect depending on the transformation temperature we didn't detect a specific pattern. There is something else that uh, we cannot say, which is who is first? That this is the clustering coming from the dislo carbon supersaturated dislocation from the cultural atmospheres. Is there a relationship between the cultural atmospheres and the clustering? I cannot tell yet. At some point, I believe that the clustering is the fragmentation because of extra energy and evolution to the equilibrium coming from the carbon supersaturated dislocations. But uh, nowadays, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I have seen dislocations at the same time of clustering and um, I have seen clustering as fragmentation of this location is, is too, too fine investigation to have an answer from my own nowadays. Okay, okay. I, I have another question for you uh, because uh, people always claim meridian has a quite strong effect uh, on the dislocation stability. So I just wonder if, if we can add some uh, add more molybdenum, maybe uh, we can control the cluster. Oh, that would be great. Is, is that right? The, the, molybdenum the, effect. Yeah, what, what uh, I, I experienced is that uh, at some point we need, we need uh, no complementary analysis. We need uh, correlative analysis. Everything is getting too, too critical, and the question are too critical. To we need to do correlative analysis of all of this, and uh, uh, it had not been possible for me, unfortunately, so far. Okay, I, I have one more question for you, because Maybe the uh, you are an expert. Okay. Yeah. You, because you are expert of super line. but I just wonder how to improve the property. Uh, for the super band line. Can, can we uh, promote the twinning more? Twinning more instead of sleep more? Yeah. For yeah. super band line. Yeah, that's what I tried to, uh, what I briefly mentioned on this, these uh, three heat treatments. N now, my main interest is in, uh, in the structures with a significant amount of retaining austenite. And for that, I'm talking about 30 and 50. Uh, percent of retaining austenite because I believe that we may do a nice tailoring of the distribution of the carbon on the second phase on the retaining austenite, wide range of uh, size, morphologies, and we detect already, we have uh, some experiments where we activate the twinning. And uh, if you remember, uh, ben Benito's work in Taiwan in your lab. Yeah, yeah. That's the initial proof that we have. Okay. 